use the example, you know, Ronnie Coleman, I think he has like maybe 2 million followers. Come on, he's the king. Ronnie yeah. will always be the king. I, I, I hope I'm alive and hope it's safe to look at the person who beats his best physique ever. I mean, I just don't foresee that. But Bro, what was that? What, what was the talking about Ronnie? What was yeah. that like? You were supposed to win that. I remember because yeah. I was, like I said, I was a big fan. Yeah, I remember I thinking, remember too. oh shit, <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit, Dorian's, you know, he's retiring. Yeah, Flex yeah. Wheeler's gonna be Mr. Olympia. Fle- yeah. Out of nowhere, because Ronnie, I think before that was like tenth like, or something. Yeah, like, that. like yeah. he was seventh, like seventh yeah. place. Yeah. Then comes Ronnie, and he looked like a completely different person. Yeah. And he wins. What was that like to see that 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 change, and then you know, not win that. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's the first talking about it on your show, but I got to be honest, it, we knew it was going to happen. I mean, you know, the year before that, me and Ronnie have always been super close. You know, you just, you just, some guys you just meet immediately, you guys just hit it off. Yeah. Some guys you just know, I ain't going to never like you and I don't care and I want you to know it. It's just, I don't know why. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. So me and Ronnie had always been very great friends, you know, traveling all over the world and this, that and other competing. And, um, you know, it's been talked about and he's acknowledged to it. He finally came to me. He's like, man, look, you know, I'm tired of getting my ass whooped. What you doing? You know, because Ronnie was always natural. That's one thing a lot of people didn't know. Ronnie Tony pro and competed as a pro naturally for a long time. You know what? I used to wow. read that and that was yeah. so that's, hard to believe. That's fucking true. It's true. Well, well, I have heard that too. It's true. But you know what you do? True. You know what happens when you take a guy like that and then fucking put him on some gear? Hence back yeah. to what I said before, putting in the hard work before yeah. you go there. Wow. So same thing with Kai Green. I yep. know Kai Green very well. He yep. was natural for a long time competing until, you know, whatever. So Ronnie came to me and I'm like, okay. Because I, 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 I learned from people. So I, I never been effed up like, damn, I ain't going to tell him he might beat me one day. So we sat down and I laid the whole game work down. And next year um, he started doing well. I remember he actually beat me in the first competition ever. And we we're over in Canada and he beat me. I'm like, Phew. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was off, right? I was off. Yeah. But he still, and he, you know, and it was funny because he was talking about like, like damn, Flex, because we're good friends, right? So he's like, damn, Flex, I beat you. Damn, they, they must think I'm good. Yeah. I beat you. So it's not like, man, I beat you. Yeah. It's my boy talking to me, right? Yeah. So I'm like, Ronnie, you're good. So <laughs> the next weekend, you know, uh, we end up competing again, and I was in uh, Florida at the Pro Cup. Florida Pro Cup and I ended up winning and then it was a big show the following weekend and I did champion back in those days and I'm like fuck and he's right on my ASS and he's never 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 been in a call out with me I mean he's been like third or fourth call out and I've always been call out number one so Mm -hmm. I'm like huh you know and then you know I I beat him in that show and then the following year I I watched his physique change we're working at the same working with the same uh, um, person for our diets and, you know, Chad Nichols and Chad had actually told me, he goes, wow, Ronnie, Ronnie can't handle your diet. I go, what do you mean? He goes, because I go zero carbs for a long time. I, I can just do that. I don't go into what they call um, um, ketosis. Or? Yeah. Uh, no, um, it's really dangerous. Um, hypoglycemic. Oh, right. When right. you don't have enough carbs, I, I can just handle it for whatever reason. He goes, yeah, I dropped Ronnie down to like 200 you know, grams of carbs. And he almost passed out. He goes, Shad, I can't do this shit. So <laughs> his, you know, so his low was like five, 600. I'm like, everybody's different. Right. Yeah. But I just watched him change and Chad would send me pictures of Ronnie getting ready, you know? And I'm like, God dang, we still think, well, you're going to beat him because you're shaped just that and the other. But I'm like, Phew. so I remember being on stage, 1998, and you know I was in the first call out. I think Ronnie was in the third call out. We never even met each other on stage, but I remember watching him and standing behind him, like, God dang! And I, you know, here he is doing a crap pose, and his back is straight from top to bottom, his glutes. And I'm thinking to myself, what are they missing with him? You know, he looks better than I do. I, I'm like, fuck! I hope they don't catch up and fight, figure this out, right? So you know, whatever happened. So you knew it was coming. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's been talked about before and I, I, I gotta be honest, regardless who I upset or not. I mean, it's, it's noted, but, um, I had, um, got, I signed with another company 15 days before that Olympia. So I left the Weeder organization and, um, I joined this company called Biochem and me and me and Ronnie took a right back. We took a right back because we had to do our little pictures after the mm-hmm. pre judge and we took a right back. He's like, Wow, man, you know, Joe Weeder, you know, sat down and talked to me. I'm like, Cool, man. You know, big deal. He goes, Flex, I've been a pro longer than you. Joe Weeder, I never even said my name. I'm like, Well, shit, he should. Look at you, Ronnie. So I'm like, You know, so he goes, Well, he, he offered me a contract. I'm like, Take it, dude, take it. So we actually end up taking a taxi back to, 
preacher, I mean, to the final show, he's like, man, I signed. I signed with Joe Weed. I'm like, hell yeah, good for you, Ronnie. So, mm, wow. So, like I said, he wasn't, he was in call out three and I was in call out one. So, if you look at the score, it's I have five, five, and his has got to be like a, a seven or a nine or something like that. So, mathematically, it was weird because the next two rounds were supposed to be it's no one who can beat me at that time. And I was posing because I was a great poser. And Ronnie's not really noted as a great poser. And then pose down, which is just the the presence you create. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of I was kind of pretty good at that. So, but he perfect scored me in those, and ended up winning by two points. And I was like, wow. So uh, just after he signed the contract, yeah. yeah. So um, that was interesting. <clears throat> you know, well, that we, would have been a great example of that politics shit I was talking to you about. Just <laughs> But I, I tell you what, though, I tell you, I tell you what, though, you, 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 you lost to the, to, uh, to, yeah. I mean, and then you went, so, went on to win yeah, and eight. dominate. So my, I wasn't mad at that. Um, and I knew I effed off that show. I, mm-hmm. I knew I did. I knew I could look better. I mean, I used to dress in great Michael Jordan, you know, training gear so that I can go to the strip club right after training hard so I could still look <laughs> decent. I just, I wasn't there. I, I had that mentality that I could never be number one. Hey, listen, if you show up at the Arnold, or the Ironman or anything else, I'm a hand to your ass. But dude, I was just had a mental block about mm-hmm. the Olympia. I just never perceived. I, I, I didn't accept myself as number one. So he won that show and he deserved to. You know, the next year I came in actually um, 15 pounds heavier. That, so that's pretty hard to do at, when you're in your prime to come in 15 pounds heavier and in better shape. And for whatever reason, he kind of missed his peak. You know, he wasn't there. So back then we were really close with each other. Whether I wanted to beat you or not, or that other person, we were close. We talked, we hung out, and we traveled the world together. It's not like now. So immediately when we take off our clothes backstage, we know what's going on. You know, mm-hmm. when we have a look at you, like, yeah, as soon as you take your clothes off, we already know, you know, who's the challenge, who's not. So, you know, I got undressed, we're working out, and, and Ronnie finally get undressed and like, oh my God, you got him. So everybody's running out to me back. You got him. You got his ass. I'm like, I got him, right? Yeah. <laughs> So I go off on stage and, you know, big story is he perfect scores me. So I'm like, huh. So that's the year that I took off my medallions on stage. So, but it hit me. It hit me. It it finally dawned on me like, okay, um, I'm better than that. So my, my thing was I took off these medallions because I'm sure you've seen it at a show before where a person's rewarded first and another person rewarded second. Oh, we made a mistake. But meanwhile, the person who took second He's pissed. Mm-hmm. And a person won. It's like, oh, we made a mistake. Number one goes to two. Number two goes to one. Now, all of a sudden, their atmosphere changes. The guy who thought he won, now he's pissed. Mm-hmm. The guy who thought he's lost, he feels like a champ. Why? Because of the medallion? Because of what they put around your neck? Because of what they said? Right, right. So it all came to me right then. I'm like, I'm not number two. This, this represents number two. I'm not number two. I'm number one. You're not going to make me feel like I'm number two. So that's all it was. And then I went to Ronnie and everybody's like, what did you say to him when you kneeled down? I'm like, man, I love you. Congratulations. And I jokingly said, you know, I'm not going to be at your after party, right? Because why? Why would I go? I'm pissed. I'm hurt. Why would I go and my best friend just went to Miss Olympia and I'm going to go there and soak and look around and make him feel uncomfortable? Sure, right. Take your ass home. Yeah. You know, so I went back to the hotel with my people and we ate pizza, you know, so I can be <laughs> myself. So, but um, I just realized that, but it helped me because if I would have, if he would have won by one point or two points again, I'm like, I can chase that down. Mm. I can go harder. But by him winning by a perfect score, I'm like, ah, oh, okay, he's out of reach now. It's just, it is what it is. So what my job is now is to hold everybody off a second place instead of chasing it. So, you know, just reality came to me. 